Hi everyone, I'm Angela Grassi from the PCOS Nutrition Center. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be talking to you live about inositol and how it can help women with PCOS. Maybe you've tried inositol yourself and seen some benefits and were wondering how it works. Or maybe you're interested in trying it. You heard the hype and want to know if it really does live up to the hype. So we're going to talk about it today. We'll talk about how inositol works and we're gonna talk about the benefits of it, how it can help women with PCOS, whether you're trying to conceive or if you're trying to improve your insulin levels, and some other lesser known uh, benefits of inositol. So go ahead and list some comments below or some questions that you have that you'd like me to answer about inositol. If you watched an earlier Facebook Live video that I did, I talked about insulin resistance and that is still available on our uh, PCOS Nutrition Center Facebook page. And we talked about insulin resistance and how when our bodies ingest food, mostly carbohydrates, that gets broken down into glucose. And that's what our cells use for energy. So if you remember, I might have talked about uh, my fist and being representing a cell. And there's all these doors surrounding your cell wall, and that's how the glucose goes in. And so when you ingest some carbohydrates and some protein foods, that causes a rise in your insulin and your glucose, which actually pushes on a doorbell on one of your doors on your cells. And that sends a signal to your cell nucleus inside the cell to open up those doors to let the glucose in. And how that works is the cell nucleus, once it hears that signal, calls over insulin. And insulin acts as like a key. So it'll come over, unlock that door, the door opens, the glucose goes in, and then the door shuts. But what we're finding, women with PCOS tend to be insulin resistant or producing too much insulin. So what that means is these doors are resistant to opening. Now, one of the reasons why they think the doors are resistant to opening in women with PCOS is because the doorbell is defective. So um, what that means is women with PCOS have an intrinsic insulin resistance, so it's different than with somebody with type 2 diabetes. So if the cell nucleus isn't getting the signal from the doorbell, if the doorbell's defective, then those doors aren't opening properly and they're not getting the right signaling. So how does what does that have to do with inositol? You might be wondering. Well, inositol works simply to repair the doorbell. And uh, it works, it's involved in insulin signaling. So it helps to fix that doorbell so then the cell nucleus gets the signal properly to call over insulin at the right rate and the glucose doesn't hang out too long in your bloodstream. So inositol is very effective in bringing down insulin levels because of that. So I was pretty skeptical. <laughs> I, have, I have PCOS myself and I wrote a book called PCOS The Dietitian's Guide and one of the chapters in there has a whole chapter on supplements and all the research surrounding um, the efficacy of different supplements for PCOS. So I was doing a lot of research and of course came across inositol and was wondering if it was really lived up to its hype. And so I decided to try it. I just had my blood work done, so my A1C at the time was 5.4%. If you don't know what an A1C is, it's another word for hemoglobin A1C. And that's an average measure of your blood glucose, so how it's been, uh, how well it's been controlled over the past three months or so. So it is an indicator of diabetes risk, and you want it well under 5.7 if possible. Once you get over 5.7, that's more considered diabetes risk. So mine was 5.4, and I had, was taking metformin at the time, and it kept my A1C at 5.4, which was perfectly fine. And then I added in the inositol. So I started taking it twice a day, two grams twice a day for about three months, and had my A1C checked again. And I was surprised that it went down to 5.1. No other changes were made in my lifestyle or with my diet or my exercise. So I kept going with it and my doctor was really happy. And uh, so we did it, I did it for another three months and had my A1C checked again and it went down to 4.9. Yes, 4.9. I was amazed because even with metformin for years, my A1C never went down that low. And so I've been taking it ever since. It's been many years now, and uh, it's kept my A1C right at around five. So I've been very happy with that. So it does show, and I'm just one person, but I definitely have been seeing good results with my patients and bringing on their A1C. And it works different than metformin. So metformin works more at your liver to decrease the production of glucose, 
But as I explained, it's more of that doorbell that's defective that your body's not getting that signal. So inositol is an insulin signaling messenger. They're also called secondary messengers that work to repair that doorbell. So it can bring down insulin that way. A lot of studies also show that it can help improve your cholesterol. So if you have high cholesterol, it can help with that. It's been shown to also help with bringing down that uh, inflammatory marker known as CRP, which unfortunately women tend to, women with PCOS tend to have higher levels of that CRP, so higher levels of inflammation compared to other women without PCOS. Um, so it does have offer those benefits. Another benefit is that by bringing down the insulin and helping those doors open better, we're also seeing that inositol plays a key role in helping to restore hormone balance. So women who haven't been getting their periods or have irregular periods, they start taking inositol, and within three months, perhaps even sooner, those cycles start to regulate on their own, even without metformin or without the um, assistance of other medications. The other good news is inositol in studies has been shown to improve egg quality, and that's mostly for the myo-inositol type. So there's a couple different types of inositol. There's actually nine of them, but in particular for PCOS uh, effectiveness, we're looking at more the myo-inositol and d inositol and what we know so far about them is that myo gets converted into dechiro inositol. And the body has myo and dechiro inositol in, its, in all its tissues, and it's actually in a 40 to one ratio. So mostly myo, 40 to one, um, mostly myo to dechiro inositol. And what we're finding is that myo inositol gets converted into dechiro. And in the ovaries, what they're finding with PCOS is that there's a defect in the ability for women with PCOS to convert that properly. So what's happening is all this myo inositol is getting converted into dechiro at a higher rate. And too much dechiro inositol is not good. Dechiro inositol in amounts over 600 milligrams a day has actually been shown to worsen a quality. So it can definitely harm fertility. So again, that's 600 milligrams or more of dechiro inositol a day can actually harm fertility. So that's why we're looking for that optimal 40 to one ratio. And that's exactly what the, the physiological ratio in your tissues is. So that ratio can mimic what your body produces. And that's why I like this product called Ovacetol. And you can see it right here. Ovacetol is a, um, an Ocetol supplement in a 40 to one ratio. And it's already blended together. This is a medical grade product. It's very high quality and it's third party tested. So what that means is an independent nonprofit organization has come in to the lab and tested it for purity and accuracy. And, um, and it's a really good product. It's a good company from Theralogix and a lot of women are finding great success with this. And so it comes in a powder. You can get it as a three month supply and it comes in an individual powder packet and you just open it up and dump the contents into a glass of water. You can do it into iced tea, unsweetened iced tea uh, or a coffee even. It could be hot beverages and just stir it up, let it dissolve. And you wanna have it with your meals because again, when you eat, so your blood sugar goes up and your insulin goes up. And uh, that's when you want the inositol to help to open up those doors to let the glucose in. So having it ideally twice a day, so having it with breakfast, having it with dinner. I personally have also seen that it has reduced cravings. I used to have the biggest sweet tooth uh, and uh, it has tremendously helped with decreasing those cravings. So I'm hoping that would help for you. I know that's a big common problem that a lot of women with PCOS have is they have those strong cravings for sweets and other carbs. So um, if you're thinking about it, it's a great product. You don't taste it. And again, it's just a powder. It's very portable. You can mix it in water and twice a day uh, within three months should help to bring down your insulin and help to improve your egg quality. Another so surprising benefit is that if you are trying to get pregnant or you are pregnant, it has been shown to reduce gestational diabetes and that's diabetes and pregnancy. And unfortunately, women with PCOS are uh, at a higher risk for developing gestational diabetes because of the high insulin levels. And uh, so it's a safe and effective um, treatment to do that. 
And then one other um, lesser known benefit is that it can help with anxiety. So inositol in studies has shown that inositol, that inositol can help to improve anxiety, which I know a lot of women with PCOS struggle with. So there's a lot of good benefits to it. Um, I take it myself, I still am taking it, and again, like I said, it's really helped to decrease my diabetes risk and keep my A1C level low, as well as my other um, labs in optimal ranges. So let me know some questions that you have about um, ovacetol or just inositol in general. I know some people are writing, can you take this if you're on the birth control pills? Yes, absolutely. Even though you're not looking to um, regulate your cycles that way, it can still bring down insulin levels and help with the cravings so, and, and the anxiety. So definitely it could still be used with the birth control pill or an IUD. Um, someone else is asking, can you take it if you have had a hysterectomy or if you're on menopause? Yes, absolutely. Again, um, not looking at the fertility aspect, but you are looking at bringing down the metabolic issues. How much is the Ovacetol? So the Ovacetol is sold as a three month supply and the total cost is $78 um, and that's for the three months. So it comes out to $26 a month or less than a dollar a day. And I do have a comparison chart on our website, pcosnutrition.com that shows it is uh, pr probably, I think it's the cheapest supplement for Inositol out there that has the com combination of 41 ratio for the amount that you're getting. So you can shop around. I have it for free shipping right now at the PCOS Nutrition Center, um, so you can definitely take advantage of that too. Um, it is not a prescription, it is over the counter, but again, only specialized places carry it. Um, what else? So yes, you should be taking this on a regular basis and it can help with fertility as well as improving insulin resistance, reducing cravings maybe, and helping with anxiety. Um, can you take it if you're nursing? Yes, you can take it while you're nursing. That has been um, noted to be fine. And if you're doing fertility treatments right now, it will not interfere with them. If anything, it does help to improve your egg quality. So um, yes, you can take it with metformin. I love all these questions. This is so fun. Um, absolutely, like I said, I do still take metformin and you can take inositol with it. I tolerate it just fine. Um, if you're having a side effect, you could cut back a little bit on it, but really we hardly ever hear of any side effects. So hopefully you'll tolerate it just fine. Again, your body has it. it your body has a physiological ratio of 40 to 1 myo inositol to dechiro. You want to have more of that myo inositol and a little bit of that dechiro. Too much dechiro is not good if you're trying to get pregnant. It can actually harm your egg quality and the reason is um, with that conversion, your body's converting too much of it. And then if you have too much dechiro and if that's affecting your um, fertility, that is gonna affect the egg quality as well and ovulation. Can I help with the facial hair? It has been shown to improve the testosterone, depends on your level of facial hair. I don't know if you are really suffering and you might need something a little bit stronger like a prescribed medication. Um, but you can order it right off our website. It's pcosnutrition.com. And we, again, we have it for free shipping. It's at the lowest rate available, which is $78, but that's for a three month supply. And that's what we recommend you give it to see if it has any benefits. If you've had blood work just done, this is a great starting point. So you can see the benefits. I recommend checking your labs again in three months and seeing what changes that you've experienced. But um, the results, I'm starting to keep some outcomes and data and the results have been really good so far. So thank you so much for joining me today. Feel free to leave more uh, questions or comments um, and uh, have a great, great weekend. Thanks.